Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today, I am diving into milk outside a bag of milk, outside a bag of milk, outside a bag of fucking milk. Where's the milk? The milk is outside the bag today. Um, if you haven't seen my uh, playthrough of the first game, go check it out. It's in my shit somewhere. Um, it was a good time. Very short. I wish it was a little longer. So I'm hoping that this one uh, satisfies my time. So with that being said, uh, I am going to dive into this game, guys. Um, and by the way, yes, I am green, okay? My sweatshirt is green. I have a fucking green backdrop, guys. I got some fucking green-ass hair, okay? I'm looking a little invisible, all right? But I'm here, and I'm ready to fucking party, okay? Let's get into this game, guys. All right, guys, here we are. We're at the uh, language screen. Let's go ahead and uh, select English, because that's what I am. That's what I speak, anyway. I'm not actually English. Oh, that's cool. Like I'm watching a fucking anime, guys. This is awesome. Aha, uh -huh. counting our steps. The store is closing soon. This is cool. I like this. Totally missed what that said. Oh, God. She freaking out, y'all. I get it. I don't like going to the store either. Hello, can I? It won't take much time. What do you see? Are you sure? Anyway, it's... What am I seeing? What have I seen? I don't know. I want to know what I see. Oh god. Yes, mom. Oh shit, fuck. Yo. Bro, there's something wrong with this girl's mom, guys. We about to find out what it is. Oh my god, creepy. I'm walking to my room trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. Mom is fucking sus, guys. I don't like her already. <laughs> Jeez. Um... I walk past the kitchen on my way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there is a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. Yikes. <laughs> oh, that's so silly. <laughs> that is a little silly. Um, I'm absolutely sure that we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. Mm. I'm absolutely sure that... Guys, what is happening, y'all? <laughs> oh my god, this is dark. <laughs> I love it, though. God, look at this art. This is so cool. I love it. I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers. But then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door break the door now. Damn, we busting in. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? 
No, no, no. I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. Dude, the fucking style of this is so dope already. Oh my god. Ooh, we know that picture from the beginning. Um, as I expected, there was no living corpse inside, but there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. <sighs> Shit. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. <laughs> Even the milk. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling, I know it's useless. Yo. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. Guys, what? Is that mom? After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. Great. I've promised so many times. Stay put. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor. Just like last time, but... Why... why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. Bra. <laughs> Bra. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by my throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me, kill me! Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Ugh. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory, so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I... Say it. God damn. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. Damn, girl. Oh my god. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. What the fuck is wrong with drinking some fucking milk? Jeez. Mama using that milk for some fucking alcoholic beverages or some shit? Damn, bitch is crazy. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. 
And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for, the, for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. As if somebody fished them out of my head one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. Oh, I was like, is shit moving over there? And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. Shit is moving, y'all. <laughs> shit. Oh, wow. <clears throat> After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it. I'd do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed, on, uh, printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and then I find a reason not to swallow it. Girl, I think you need some, though. Maybe not. Maybe her mom's trying to, like, <clears throat> fuck her ass up. I don't know. <laughs> I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? Hmm. Hey. Hey, girl. I'll be your conversation partner. What's up? What's up, girl? I'll help you today. Hey, long time no see. It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. You know we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? It hasn't been an hour, dummy. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual, judging by the pictures. The overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically, nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. He didn't reply. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, all right? I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. Uh, that's what I'm doing. You need to go to bed, girl. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Uh, what? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I could do anything, and you, you could only watch and agonize over your uselessness. I can imagine how angry you are right now. Yeah, I'm all beside myself. What made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple hours ago? I don't know what you mean. Wow, we've got a lot of choices here. Nuh-uh, I still don't understand. 
Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. Damn, pathetic. She just whines and whines all the time. Oh, these sound like horrible choices. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, all right? Oh, so you're the one calling the shots now. Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see, yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I want to say no. Oh my god. I could feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not expected. Hey, at least I tried. But wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. Hmm. Oh, that's her shadow. That's her right here. This is like her shadow. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me. Trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile. Bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I, if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. Wow. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine, you can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. <laughs> Shit. That was on you. Does it even matter? Yes. Somehow I find it hard to believe. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time. But now I feel it, tri it triple in force. It hurts so bad. Just drink your medicine already or I'll stop talking to you. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. Ew. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about ha something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. Damn. God, the art is so good, guys. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. <clears throat> I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the crackling, uh, uh, the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. You want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. Are you sure, though? What do you want, then? I just want to lie down for a bit. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Two dots, because you don't want to talk about shit. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. 
In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand annoyed and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts, they're fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just, that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. And now, start over. You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Aw, she's so cute. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Forget about them and go to bed. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They could be anywhere. Oh no. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed yet. Or I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please tell me you will help me. I'll help you. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. <laughs> um... Will you tell me? Oh no. I... Oh god, what the hell was that? Oh my goodness, what the fuck was that though? I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so... They are so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Uh, what? Did he bring milk? Did you drink milk? What the fuck do you say here, guys? Uh... I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, all, all my eyelashes, one after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after- God, I said the wrong shit, clearly. What have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then, then I need to have a bath, and then, here, drink some milk. No, we don't want her drinking milk. First death. <laughs> oh my god. First death? What the hell? I stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. That was so strange. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. To be honest, I don't know where to look for them. Well, me neither. 
I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. If I make even the smallest messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places and that's it. Why? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't and I won't. All right then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything, even an inch? Yeah, oh my oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point and click adventure game character. Sounds good. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. Shit. I totally missed that. I know how that feels though, getting stuck in multiple choice situations. You think one answer, you pick another one, and you were right the first time. Um, <clears throat> you're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions when I continue on that road. Do what you want. Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. And uh, you don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey, what? Look down. <gasps> I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie. There's smoke coming from your clothes. Wowie. Oh, wow. Wowie, guys. Oh, that's cool looking. I like that. Um, I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was in order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. It tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Yeah, let's find him. Oh, I get to clip. Oh my god. Um, in the fan. What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that is looking straight at a giant fan. <laughs> and? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage that, that it's locked in and the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. All right, let's look. We're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna look at the medication. I look at the amount of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't wanna think about it, I don't. Uh-oh, what's wrong? Probably shouldn't have looked at that. <laughs> I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. Yeah, because you ordered me to. Is that an accusation? Things could have been much worse. Yeah. I heave a deep sigh, come closer, and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it and along with them. A firefly, hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands on my palm. The firefly rush rushes up my arm and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Yeah, that's good, we want that. Uh... Um... Hmm. That is freaking me out. I don't know what the hell's the deal with that shit. Let's look in the... I don't know if this really matters. What's this? What are those? Ah, uh, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. 
I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. Now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. Okie dokie, Smokey. It's not easy to get out of here. Okay, it's not easy to get out of that shit. Um, bag. I looked down. My school bag, worn and silly, is almost screaming uh, of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Totally not cool, senseless, and cruel. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. All right, all right. What did you like the most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me. Let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft, and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. And does it even matter? Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? Please. Okay, fine. That day, Dad picked me up from school earlier, explaining to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? Why can you keep telling about it again? Huh. Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what little, the little brat has done. Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mom greeted us there. We had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this further. No, you'll tell me again. Fuck. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mom was not home. Again. I hate mom so much. Oh my god, this is so fucking sad though. What happened next? Suddenly I feel someone's eyes on my back. Knowing that these moments should never ever be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? <laughs> I just got an achievement that says you're annoying. <laughs> I want to... Listen, I got some info after out of her, so cool. Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what had happened. I looked at my bag again, light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts, and there was also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of a sudden anger, but I managed to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. 
The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. Uh, I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure, let's continue searching. Uh, let's... Oh my god. Let's see where else to look here. Um... I kind of want to just... I want to see what this is. Your usual notebook page is glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn in them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you knew them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, is it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. Oh. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Um, I don't know how many there are. What's this? Right. Insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves... The leaves smell of dust and cardboard and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. <clears throat> well, we kind of don't have any choice here, you know. Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? Hmm. Do I have to keep, like, searching? Or do I just finish when it says this? That, I, I don't know. What is that? I want to know what the hell that is. Do I click that shit right now? This is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slap my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now, I can't. Let's continue searching. <clears throat> hey, maybe we'll find something inside? <sighs> God dang it, I accidentally pressed it again. There's something about her thoughts like festering something something. Shit. <laughs> I'll have to read that one back. Um, okay. Whoopsie. <laughs> um, what's that? Ooh, creepy. Okay. Ooh, God. I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. Oh, well. What happens? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We'd better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Oh yeah, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but co cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? I do. Yeah, I get it. Totally. I look at my laptop. La laptop. <laughs> I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. 
so much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. All right, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wonderful, and here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives. Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. You'll end up returning to that subject anyway, or fine. Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. <clears throat> I can see that myself, if only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the, fu the, f the further course of actions, then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. I'm glad I kept searching. Shit. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. That's the closet, huh? Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is... Uh, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally, and I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Mm. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. <laughs> From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh, no, you don't. Well, then act normal. Hmm. That. I turn my eyes toward the inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. I don't know what the hell that shit is, man. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Well, can't disagree with you there. This is my sketchbook. Half of the pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Maybe you can ask your mom to buy one. Ooh. I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay. I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad. I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. Ooh. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling is stopped even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. If I wait a little longer. If I wait. Open your eyes. No. It's okay, just do it. No way, I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down, girl. No. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm your ass down. Fine, she says. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? 
I don't know, did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way, everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me, that's it, I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly! The wind immediately stops for a moment. The world sinks into perfect silence, but only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy, you made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up in the air, uh, flies up in and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew! Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Man, it's gonna be daytime by the time we fucking are done with this shit. Music stopped. I doubted all the compartments are locked. What if... I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Alright. Fucking shit. That thing is killing me. It looks like the last thing is the clock. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine, you have a clock right in front of you though. I can't look at its hands for too long. At first I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction and then they disappear altogether. And then, and then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face and also I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess, truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? Oh my God, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? No. Let's continue searching then. Okay, I think that's the last thing other than that shit. I don't know what the hell that is. I don't know if I want to click on that shit. I guess I'm gonna... Oh wait, we got one more thing here. Is that a... It's just a radio. Like, is there... Oh, sneaky... Hello? Creepy. Okay, we have this here. Um, are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. <laughs> well, only if they purposely want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. Alright. Is there anything else? I want to get everything. I already looked at that. The only thing is this umbrella. <laughs> the umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder it's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can do without my help. <clears throat> Still, a firefly won't hide in a place like that. It'll catch a cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. Uh, we might. Huh? Hello? What? You're really not gonna look? Shit. Okay. Listen, always look everywhere, okay? You never know. Alright, I think... Is that everything, guys? Do I search this shit? Oh. That's... That is broken. Can't click it, guys.
Weird. Okay. Well, I'm going to finish uh, searching. Hopefully I got them all. Yay! Uh, you found all the fireflies. Amazing, I guess. <laughs> Damn, she's like, uh... I managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just gonna... Uh, fuck. <laughs> God, guys, I suck. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some air. Somehow, those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. All right, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What's with this silly question? I'm gonna sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk. And yet, and yet. You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill? Of course not. <clears throat> In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. <clears throat> no, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I, uh... I nervously scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. No, you a bully. Ooh, she's zonking, guys. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course. I always look sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Then one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they like this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today, today, well, I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know. Use your hands. All right. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Oh, God dang it. <laughs> Shit. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. 
Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know just an I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and go to sleep, finally. You won't get it. Well, I'm not gonna get it, guys. Damn. I wake up on a wooded bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. Ooh. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. <clears throat> oh, hi. You're late. Uh, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Uh, sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See, much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile? Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the, I'm not the one who decided that. You think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird, constantly shifting between happiness, sad, loudness, silence. He's a wacko and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. I don't want him to lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresca was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to charge the sign, change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you anyway? Or how, how old are you by the way? None of your business. Ah, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but the scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says, we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go, what are you waiting for? Huh? Oh yeah. Get in there quick, shit. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um, maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently toward one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with her back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I... I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry toward them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um... If you are, if he's yours, please get him away from me. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I grabbed Tresca's hand and laid him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar, and eyes popped. He's also shaking. 
what is fucking going on, though? Is this a dream? Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What the hell? Why well, said, what the hell was that? What was that shit? I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who, me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. What's going on, dude? Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store's staff hang a new sign on the door. <clears throat> there you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move. I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that is formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. The what? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a... Oh, I ain't saying that. And for the fact that your son... Hmm, I'm not saying that word. I don't like that word. But you heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a, a banknote to the cashier of much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees, then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca breaks, <coughs> finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I, what is happening? <laughs> I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know, he turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. I stare at his back confused. Uh, creepy. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. Oh no. What happened? Oh god. Oh god, what fucking happened though? <laughs> oh god, what kind of ending did I get? I don't even know. What happened? Oh my god, what the fuck happened in that ending? I have no idea. I'm so confused. Um. Okay, so the. Yeah, we got the you won't get it ending. Um, this is, I guess, the default ending? So it just says it mirrors the plot of the original milk inside a bag of milk game. So yeah, as we saw, the main character had dreamed that she was helping a young boy get a um, a bag of milk at the store, which is kind of what happened in the first game, you know? Okay, so uh, that was kind of a... Uh, was, that was not a good ending, was it? Was that not a good ending? <laughs> that didn't seem like a very good ending to me, but... Um, Interesting. Okay. Huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through another couple of endings here and see what else we can get. I look down. I look down ending. What the hell is that? I wake up and immediately almost lose consciousness from horror. A thin metal stairway snakes around a giant column disappearing into the darkness. I press myself into the cold wall and pray that I freeze into it. This feeling, I know I've spent a couple hours or days here, but I don't know how high the column is. I don't know whether I'm going up or down. Uh, 
A billion pounds of concrete and a million miles of emptiness. It's impossible to stay sane when you're near cosmic numbers like that. Looking at them, touching them, even thinking of them makes me feel unimaginable horror. It was just a matter of time before my short term here will end. My mind will melt, my body will turn to dust. The wall's coarse surface scratches my face. The steps under my feet hum from the wind, eager to escape the concrete's clutches and dive into the abyss along with me. But I'll stay here. I'll stay here without going anywhere. I won't even open my mouth. My every word will be swallowed up by the abyss. I won't take a single step, why would I, to find out where the stairway abruptly ends? It's all meaningless. Yikes. Many units of time pass, but I'm still unmoving. My whole body is trembling, but when I, but then I realize it's a whole, it's the whole space around me that is trembling. It can't wait to destroy me. Maybe I should gather my will and at least turn my head. That thought doesn't stay in my head for long. It's torn, it's torn out with um, inhuman force, unaware of what's about to happen. I slowly turn my whole body with a squeak. No, it's it is that is. <laughs> No, this is not what I wanted. Don't. Amongst the silence sings a lonely colossus, unmoving until the music stops. The bridge across the dark abyss cannot be seen. Dear God. Oppressive, thick, sticky air drives itself into my ears, silencing my thoughts with a haphazard string of words while I watch the scene before me unfold. Hundreds of giant concrete structures, just like mine, spread in tiny rows, endlessly in all directions. Stairways wrap around them like vines. There at the end of this world, there's a person smiling. This world still exists, but all that makes it both, uh, makes it both exist and not. I try to erect a mind block, but to no avail. My brain is already at the mercy of the super creature. A moment passes and I realize that my body doesn't belong to me either anymore. My legs start moving on their own. The only thing I can do is choose the direction, up, down, or... The crowd notices blood on Wazik's hands. He runs away, Mendel appears. He has nothing human about him apart from his excessive grace and hidden elegance. He walks out to the center of the stage. First act begins. Foreign thoughts become even more incoherent. There's less and less space for my own. Do you feel the connection to your body clearly, or does it still cause confusion and fear? If you've been living through that fear a lot recently, how did it manifest exactly? Answer honestly, don't hide anything. Yikes, dude. I decided to to descend. You can have a sneaking suspicion that something is wrong because your path has changed. Maybe you started talking in a wrong way or made some sort of mistake. If so, start getting used to your new life. Try creating imagery that would instill the feeling that everything is as it should be, and with time, it will create a new order inside you. I don't doubt that you're going through some hard times, but you have to make sacrifices grow up. Only then, you'll be able to obtain the meaning of life. Do you get it? Try that if you find it important. Every passing day is a precious gift. If you share a piece of that gift with the world even once, it'll seem like a speck of dust. Do you get it? No, I'm sorry. I won't get that then. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? Yes, even you get it. When you notice how people look at themselves in the mirror, when you look at your own reflection and realize that it exists in reality, do you understand how exactly it exists? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Ugh, another terrible morning. 
Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just don't want to be branded a loser on my first day. Cheer up, there's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you after all. Hey, hurry up. Yes, mom. Oh, dear God. What the hell? <laughs> uh, another terrible morning. Why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others in school will think. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is... Okay. Um, sorry, what? It's all the same dialogue, at least. Yes, Mom. I just have a corkscrew neck. No big deal. Oh, now I'm missing a face. I have a huge hole in my head. Awesome. Wow, this is... <laughs> I like this one. Oh god, what's next? What do we get next? Okay, uh, creepy. A little freaky, um... <laughs> oh no. Oh. Got another one of me watching myself in the mirror. What? Eyeballs falling out. Okay. Yeah, that's a terrible morning, I gotta say. I don't know if I'd like how that feels either. Alright, well, we got eyeballs falling out. Now we have, uh, eight, nine, uh, ten? Are those ones closed? I don't know. We got a bunch of eyeballs now. And now we're missing a head. Awesome. Okay. Why is my face so stupid? You don't have a face, girl. You don't got a head either, but you know. Oh, now we don't have a face. We have our head, but we don't have our face. Okay. Good morning. I feel wonderful today. Can't wait for my first day at school. Hey, hurry up. Yes, mom. Damn. And now she's looking at the back of her head. Oh, jeez. That was interesting. I liked that one. Okay, guys. So that was really interesting. Um, there are five endings, but I only did a few of them. Um, maybe I'll do the last two another time. <laughs> the first one was kind of just a play on the first game, Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. Um, you know, she was dreaming about helping a boy get to the store to buy a bag of milk and he told her that she wasn't helping him at all so that seemed kind of like a terrible ending um but i like how it was a play on like the first game that was pretty cool and then uh the last ending there was um like she kept she was looking at herself in the mirror and uh she kept thinking she was fucking stupid looking until she had no face um so that was really interesting uh <laughs> I actually like that that last one there. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, overall, I really did like this game a lot. I love the art style. It was so good. Um, I love how there's like little anime like type clips in here. That was really really cool. Um, but yeah, overall, I really really enjoyed this one. But yeah, with that, guys, um, thanks for watching. Um, you know, give me a like, uh, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing. I would appreciate it. Um, and I'll see y'all again next time.